sure. Hi, everyone. Welcome once more. If you are following us on Facebook, that's where we went first. But here we are now again, uh, <laughs> the right platform. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us uh, today. Sorry for the mix up. Uh, we are here to discuss baby sleep. All of us have struggled. Okay, if you're a mother or a father, you have struggled with baby sleep at some point. But we have with us today a certified pediatric sleep consultant. Her name is Anissa Samnani Sharif. She's here to share with us the knowledge that comes with many years of just learning about babies and sleep and having worked through it herself. She's going to share her own story, so no, no worries. Um, we welcome every question. I can already start seeing you live. I'm happy, Karibuni. Um, so we are going to just kick off. We had prayed and God is blessing this and I know that we're all going to learn. So let's do this. Anissa Karibu, thank you for just joining hi, us. And hi, hi. thank you so much, Doc. Uh, I just want to try, start sharing my screen. I hope it will allow me. Uh, if not, maybe you can try from your end. Is it coming through? Slides. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Great. So um, Doc already gave a little bit of an introduction about me. My name is Anissa, and I am a pediatric sleep coach, a certified one. Um, and um, uh, I have a family, as you can see, that's my three and a half year old daughter. Um, I did get into this because of her. Um, we did have a struggle as well when she was, you know, a few months old and all she wanted to do was breastfeed and do contact naps. Um, and eventually it did become quite hectic for us as a family. And therefore we did resort to sleep training, which I didn't know anything about at the time. So I'm pretty sure that if, if this is something new for, you know, any of you, please feel free to ask your questions um, and understand what it's all about. Basically, motherhood or parenthood does not always have to mean sleepless nights. You can sort this out um, as early as when you get back home from the hospital. Um, so I have done my undergraduate degree in child and youth development where um, I um, you know, worked with a lot of uh, children. And when I got back to uh, Nairobi from South Africa, uh, I got into uh, marketing and other, uh, you know, stuff, uh, you know, through, uh, for my career. But now I have got into uh, pediatric sleep coaching, which has been about three years now, like I said, because of my little one and all the, uh, you know, hardships and sleepless nights that we went through the first couple of months. Um, now, why I got into this was because um, three days into the sleep training, uh, my own little one, I realized that this is actually magic and can help a lot of moms out there. And therefore, I am here to guide you on how to get them um, sleeping the correct way and um, as early as possible. Great. So um, <clears throat> obviously, we are here because we want to know the importance of sleep and routine for babies and toddlers. Um, so I'm going to go through some slides. And then if you have any questions, please, please feel free to ask. And um, we will get on to those as well. Now, um, babies, number one, thrive on routine. Please, please know this. Um, they feel a lot more secure and, um, uh, you know, a lot more at ease when uh, they actually know what is coming and when their uh, routines are a lot more predictable. So please keep this in mind. Um, and when sleep is, um, you know, in order, you find that routine comes quite easily. So <clears throat> basically when they're able to sleep longer naps and their naps are, and nighttime sleep are more predictable, which is what I'm going to teach you here on how to get that to happen. Um, routines become a lot more predictable and you see a lot of change when it comes to um, their mood, their mood, their resiliency, their development and so forth. Great. Now, um, sleep is important. OK, none of us can do without it. As you can see, I have asked the question, can any of you? Can any of you do without sleep? And I'm pretty sure that the answer is um, no for all of us, moms alike, dads alike, as well as just any, any human being. Um, we actually do spend one third of our lives sleeping. So it does show you how important um, sleep is. And I usually do uh, tell the moms that I work with and the dads that sleep is as important as nutrition. So please let's not fall back on realizing that sleep is as important and get down to it as 
soon as we can, um, especially when we do become uh, parents um, and first time uh, moms and dads as well. Okay. Um, on average, uh, a human being, an adult is supposed to get a good number of hours at night, which is seven good hours. Um, so please let's try and this should be uninterrupted. So once we get our children sleeping, we need to realize that this is as important for ourselves as well. And another important thing is the quality of sleep that we're getting needs to be as um, good as just, you know, sleeping. So that is why I say um, the um, uh, non inter like non uh it needs to be sleep that is continuous and not uh, interrupted. So, of course, when you do have newborns, you do have to get up to feed. But eventually, when they uh, pass the fourth, fifth, sixth month mark, they can actually go through the night without getting up for a feed. Nutritionally, it's not needed um, if they are medically OK and their weight gain is good. So we can um, afford to get that seven hours of sleep a night without interruptions. Great. Um, so another slide here for teaching you guys why sleep is important for children. It affects all these things in, in our kids, um, starting from happiness to alertness and attention, cognitive performance, mood, resiliency, vocab acquisition, learning and memory, and so forth, physical growth. Now, a lot of us don't realize that these are all the things that are affected by our kids' sleep. Um, so their growth is not just about the amount of milk they take and about a, a um, about the uh, amount of solids they start taking at around six months, but also sleep. Sleep does also um, affect um, their milestones, their physical growth, their mental growth, their cognitive um, learning and all of that. Now, sleep is an essential building block for your child's mental and physical health. So please, guys, do keep this in mind. I have a lot of testimonials from previous clients where they don't just talk about being able to sleep through the night, but they do talk about how much um, you know, their kids managing to sleep a good number of hours a day has also shown a difference in um, physical growth, milestones, resiliency, and mood, and so forth. So please um, listen carefully so that you can start, you know, creating these good habits from an early age, um, as early as now, however old your little one is, um, because you are tuned in. So you definitely do have, um, you know, somebody, uh, a, a child who needs that sleep. Okay, great. Now, um, we are here most most likely because your uh, little ones are having trouble sleeping, um, or at least most of you are. Now, the American Academy of Pediatrics actually estimates that sleep problems affect 25 to 50% of children and 40% of adolescents. So please remember that you are not alone in this problem and it is solvable. Okay, great. Now, um, sleep is as important and crucial. So you do need to teach your little ones um, the ability to sleep independently. I usually do tell my parents, can you imagine Imagine being sleepy and not being able to sleep because either your hubby is not there or your friend or your mom is not there. So this is how much stress uh, as kids they go through if they're not able to fall asleep independently and you're not there to guide them to be able to fall to sleep on their own. OK, now there are a lot of external sleep props is what we call them as pediatric sleep coaches that we tend to use, especially as first time moms. And no judgment here. We've all used it, including myself. Um, external sleep props include uh, things like nursing to sleep, uh, bottle feeding to sleep, holding to sleep, walking, rocking, you name it. Any external way that you're actually helping your little one to sleep is what we want to try to avoid from the beginning so that they learn that they can actually fall asleep in their own cots. Now, what we tend to do as parents is we uh, make them fall asleep on us and then we put them into the bed. And uh, when we're doing this, what we're actually teaching them is that they have to fall asleep on us and uh, then they are transferred to the cot. So when they wake up, they actually need that to be recreated for them to fall asleep again. So this is what we want to try to avoid, okay? Now, another very important thing is a lot of parents who come to me um, believe that infants and toddlers will eventually grow out of um, these sleep habits that we form. And yes, some do. However, a lot of them don't. You find um, I have parents who come to me when their kids are about, you know, four months, six months old, and they decide, okay, no, they're going to try their best. And the same parents come to me at three years old and say, you know what, we tried everything, but um, it's still as bad. And a lot of times I find 
parents come to me when they're pregnant with their second child or third child and now it's not feasible what they've been managing which is maybe co-sleeping or still helping baby to sleep because they're not going to have that luxury of that time to be with their little one until they fall to sleep every single night especially and for naps as well during the day so please keep in mind that it is important uh, to teach your little ones to fall asleep independently from the beginning okay great um now the good news is that it's teachable and we can manage to do this so please don't feel disheartened even if your little ones are one years two years old i actually work with kids up to the age of seven so it's not uh it's never too late you can still teach it it's just easier when they are younger. So if you do have babies who are a couple of months old, four months, six months, that is actually the best time um, to get their sleep habits on the right track, okay? Um, now, like I said, parents should not have to endure sleepless nights. So that is why we are here. Um, and I can tell you that it's very fabulous to see parents who come to me from the beginning to the end and they've changed their mind completely about how sleep can be really easy okay now it can be a, a reality for you as well so what we're going to go through now is the seven most important sleep tips that i usually um share with the parents that i work with so we will not go as in depth uh but we will be talking about the seven uh sleep tips that i usually uh give my parents and then obviously we go more in depth when we do uh, when you do actually do the two to three week program uh, with me. Um, so I share a lot more information, but I am going to give you the main tips that um, is going to change a lot of um, what you're facing right now with the sleepless nights. Great. So the first one uh, is babies need to learn independently, uh, sleep independently without any external sleep props, which is what we just talked about um, a little while ago. Now, like I said, a lot of us use, do use these props and we need to try to get rid of them. So if you do have newborns, maybe below four months old, I would advise you to try to use the pick up, put down method. Um, you can go online and uh, check how to use this pick up, put down method. It's basically trying to teach your little one that um, they can fall asleep in their cots on their own and they don't always have to fall asleep on you. So I do know as a mom that at the newborn stage, it is very, very common for babies to fall asleep on the breast, on you, contact napping, and that is okay. We need to form that bond 100%, um, but we need to at least 40 to 50% of the time teach them that they can also fall asleep in their own cot by themselves. So let's try this pick up, put down method as well, okay? Um, now, what happens, like I said, is when we help them fall asleep, um, uh during sleep cycles which is usually 40 minutes during the day for babies when they're napping and about two hours at night uh during the night what happens is when they do come out of their deeper sleep and go into light sleep stages this is when you find that they are waking up and calling out for you to come and help them back to sleep because that is how they know how to fall back to sleep now when they learn these independent sleep skills and are able to put themselves back to sleep they still do come out of the uh, deep sleep into these light sleep uh, stages however the difference here is they actually do not need to call out to you anymore to get them back to sleep so they will they will toss they will turn they look at the environment if it's a friendly familiar environment they actually manage to go back to sleep on their own and that is what we call sleeping through the night so all adults as well as babies toddlers we do wake up in the night but we manage to put ourselves back to sleep and that is what we are trying to accomplish here okay great so second point is consistency so a lot of parents when they come to me they've tried what we call sleep training or they've tried to teach their kids how to sleep independently whatever whatever um words the you know vocab that we use um the main thing is consistency is key because a lot of parents try something for one night or two nights or just for a couple of naps and then say it's not working now this does not work with babies you need to realize that they learn with repetition and consistency so with kids you need to do something for at least three days for them to actually pick up the habit. So please, when you are trying something and these tips as well, try for at least three to four days before you say, this is not working for me, because that is the time they need to adjust and adapt to um, these new things that you are bringing across to them. 
Okay, and this helps the baby's brain and body to understand that every time they go into a particular place to sleep, um, they are actually, um, you know, used to it. So, so what I'm talking about here is um, the sleep situation when it comes to consistency also needs to be the same. So I do not usually encourage kids to sleep in different places all the time. So whether it be naps or nighttime, I would prefer that... Um, they sleep in the same environment, in the same cot, in the same room every time to get them to understand that this is the place I sleep. So it actually um, brings that transition to them much easier, knowing that this is what is expected of them when they go into this particular place. Now, another thing that we need to keep in mind is um, naps and darkness. A lot. This is a, a big question that people ask, and anywhere from two to three months is actually a, a good uh, place to start where also naps need to be taking place in the dark um, because this is when their circadian rhythm starts checking in and darkness helps a lot when it comes to sleep. As adults as well, we do sleep better in the dark. So please keep this in mind as well. Now, another very important thing with the environment of the room and consistency is please keep the room as boring as possible. I know, especially when we're first time moms, we're very excited and we want to make our nursery extremely exciting and have a lot of things, cartoons on the walls, uh, mobiles hanging from the cribs. Now, this does not help babies sleep better. It actually does the opposite. So what we want to try to do here is keep the uh, nursery as boring as possible so that they actually know that it's a place to sleep and not a place to play or get entertained. So please keep that in mind. Um, another thing is um, safe sleep guidelines. A lot of us tend to put um, loose beddings, pillows, blankets, bumpers, and all sorts of uh, things in the crib. This is the worst thing to do because it is the number one reason for SIDS, which is sudden infant death syndrome. And we want to try to avoid this at all costs. So please do keep in mind that in the cot, uh, we need to make sure that it is just a fitted bed sheet your little one with a sleep sack on. So this is a sleep sack. When I talk about a sleep sack, it is a wearable blanket, which we usually recommend babies to use till they're at least one years old. They can use this up to the age of three, but at least till one years of age where then you can introduce blankets and so forth uh, because they have the maturity and the, the knowledge to remove the, the blanket when they're not comfortable. Um, up to one year, one year of age, please use sleep sacks only and not wear uh, not other blankets or pillows and um, all of that okay it also um, discourages them from climbing out of the cot which is another safety issue um, which you know a lot of babies by the time they're about a year year and a half they are trying to climb out of the cot so please keep this in mind as well okay now we go to the third tip which is early bedtimes now a lot of our uh People, I can say in our culture, both African, Indian culture, I have seen that people like to put their kids to bed very late. And this is because possibly they stay with in-laws or they stay with hubbies who come on pretty late uh, from, uh, from uh, work and so forth. And so they try to keep baby awake so that they can get time with uh, the family. However, I will tell you that this is um, something that you should not do because you would not wait for family members to get home to feed your baby dinner or to give them their milk feed. So I would expect the same when it comes to bedtime. Um, we need to try to work around, especially in the first year, our baby's sleep times. Um, so we can use other times such as weekends, early mornings, where when babies do sleep through the night well, they're actually able to wake up at a good time, 6.30, 7 in the morning. And you can actually spend about an hour in the morning with them instead of having that evening time when they're tired and cranky. You'd rather spend that early morning time when they're actually happy um, from a good night's sleep and you get a lot more quality time with them. I always say quality is better than quantity time because a lot of times we want to spend five, six hours with our kids, but we're just fighting, we're cranky, we're tired, um, and not just the baby, us as well. I'd rather you spend the two hours in the morning, but they're actually well rested and you're getting that quality time with them. So a lot of um, moms do get uh, another point. A lot of moms do get the advice that uh, put your be uh, baby to sleep late so that they can wake up late. And I can't tell you that this is the furthest from the actual truth because 
whatever time you put your baby to sleep, they're going to get up around the same time every single day because of circadian rhythms. So if we put our babies to bed at 12 o'clock at night or at 10 o'clock at night, they're still going to wake up by seven, latest eight o'clock because of the circadian rhythm. And what you've done here is only um, gotten them less sleep than they actually need because on average, most babies as well as toddlers need a good 10 to 12 hours of sleep. So an ideal bedtime is between 6 to 8 p.m. If you're really pushing it, then it's around 8, 8.30, um, the older they get, okay? Um, great. And then another thing here is following awake windows. So during the day, we need to realize that we do need to follow awake windows. I am going to share on the group with Doc, and then she can maybe share it on the group, is awake windows by age. So this is magic. Even if you don't do a lot of other things, but you just follow awake windows, you will find that your baby does not get overtired um, and they're not undertired as well because uh, fighting with an overtired or undertired baby, trying to get them to sleep is the worst part of any mom day so try to follow awake windows um, awake window guides which I will be sharing with you as well okay great um, also we need to realize that until baby is on a one nap schedule or a no nap schedule we're not following the clock so you're not going to you know set your day in stone as in they're waking up at seven o'clock they're going to bed uh, they're they're going to uh, they're going down for their nap one at 10 o'clock they're going down for nap two at 12 o'clock no you're following awake window so for example for a four month old their awake window is about one and a half to two hours so what you need to do is from the time they wake up in the morning for example they wake up at seven o'clock you are using that as your guide for the day so their nap one is going to be at around 8 39 and please do also try to um, follow their sleep cues um, a lot of the times as parents we wait till they're cranky enough uh, to put them to bed but then we've kind of lost that time where um, they're just tired enough to fall asleep easily we get them at an overtired stage so some of the signs to look out for when they are tired are yawning rubbing eyes a red of the eyes, less activity, um, less interaction with you. They're getting a lot more bored, or they're staring out into space. Those are those are just some of the um, you know early signs that you can look at and try to put them to bed um, according to their wake windows and sleep cues, rather than waiting for them to get cranky. Because, like I said, then you're dealing with an overtired baby, which is extremely difficult. Okay, great. Now the fourth one is bedtime routines. This is very underrated for a lot of um, moms you know they think it's a waste of time but let me tell you um, bedtime routines are super important it's a transition period for the little one number one and number two it is a sleep uh, it is a signal or a cue system to the little one so adults can tell the time we can look at the clock or the watch and say oh it's 10 o'clock it's time for bed the difference with babies is they cannot do that so when we repeat a bedtime routine every single day, 20 to 30 minutes before bed, we're actually sign signaling or cueing to the little one that bedtime or sleep time is coming. And this actually makes them physically and mentally ready um, for sleep. OK, it should be not more than 30 minutes because then it drags on. Um, and uh, the bedtime routine should not consist of screen time. So that's one very important thing. And I do see this a lot of times when uh, moms come to me for the first time before we do go on with their sleep, uh, sleep coaching program is that they use screen time as part of the bedtime routine. And again, this is the worst thing you can do because screen time actually um, does the opposite it stimulates the baby instead of calming them down for sleep um, so please reduce uh, sleep, uh, screen time first and foremost it's not um, advised for uh, uh, younger than one years of age at all uh, for screen time and after that uh, i would prefer you do active screen time so facetiming with family rather than passive screen time which is just watching um, so one hour if not two hours before bed please reduce all screen time altogether and also another trick is dimming lights in the house one hour before bed. So if bedtime is seven o'clock by six, 6.15, let all the lights in the house be quite dim. Um, this actually helps produce melatonin hormone in your body, which actually helps us 
sleep and reduces the cortisol levels. Um, again, cortisol is what keeps us awake. So this really, really helps as well. Now, another thing with uh, bedtime routines, they need to be consistent. So we talked about consistency as our second um, tip. So this repeats here. Um, whatever you do as your bedtime routine needs to be the same every day because they actually learn the steps that they go through before they're actually put to bed. So you can do a bath. So feed should be the first step of the bedtime routine, then a bath, um, maybe a massage if they're younger kids, um, pyja put on their pajamas, say, a, you know, do a story time, uh, books, um, either a prayer, and then put them into bed awake to try for them to fall to sleep on their own. And like I said, if you do follow awake windows, this does get quite um, easy to, you know, for them to fall asleep on their own. Um, yeah, great. Um, Number five is nap time routines. So again, this is again underrated. Um, a lot of parents don't even know what nap time routines are. So it's again similar to bedtime routines, but it's a lot shorter. So again, this is a wind down time. It's very hard for us to expect babies who are playing and active to suddenly fall asleep. So we do need to give them this transition time. Um, so it's just about, about, about a five to 10 minute routine where you're taking baby into the um, room, getting the, you know, dimming the lights, getting the, getting them to change their diaper, putting on their sleep sacks, maybe say a small prayer or read them a short storybook and then put them into bed. So by this time, they've already known, because if you're repeating this every nap time, they've actually known that this is what happens just before I'm getting into bed. And again, this physically and mentally gets them ready to actually um, get into bed. And I do advise that feeding should not be part of the nap time routine because this does cause a feed sleep association. So this is when uh, babies tend to fall asleep either on the breast or the bottle. So I do suggest what we call the easy routine, um, eat, play, sleep. So eat after a nap, play and then sleep time. And if you find that maybe your baby has not fed well at the first um, at the first uh, feed right after a nap, you can top up in between the awake window, but you always want to try to leave a 30 minute gap, a 20 to 30 minute gap between the end of a feed to the actual um, sleep time or nap time. OK, so that's another thing. Um, then we talk about we talk about skipping naps and having late bedtimes is going to impact the next 24 hour cycle. So I've heard this from a lot of moms as well. Um, they're told to skip naps or keep their babies awake the whole day so that they can sleep better at night. And again, this is the furthest from the truth you can get. Um, sleep begets sleep. So when they sleep well during the day um, and get enough hours according to their age, then they actually do sleep better at night because they're not overtired and they have gotten enough rest during the day. Um, babies are extremely active, um, especially after uh, they start crawling, walking. They're very, very active. So they do need these nap times during the day to get them through this day. If they don't sleep all day by the time it gets to bedtime, they're super overtired. They can actually even look manic hyperactive, where moms um, uh, confuse this for them not being tired, but it actually is a sign of overtiredness when you find in the evening at around between six, seven o'clock, they're, they're just completely manic, hyperactive, um, and you feel, oh, they can still stay awake. And what you're doing is actually the opposite of what you should be doing is putting them to bed. Rather, you keep them up um, till later. And by the time you're trying, they're just done with. Um, and an overtired state is not just, um, you know, a bad thing for kids. It's also hard for adults alike, because when we've had a really long day and all we want to do is hit that pillow and fall asleep, what happens? We're just tossing and turning in bed because we're overtired. So please, let's not do this um, to our little ones. Again, I'm going to share um, not just the awake window guide, but I am going to share how many hours of sleep uh, we do need in a day um, according to the age of the baby. Um, so please follow these guidelines and you will see a drastic change just with following these particular um, timings. Great. Um, 
Now, if you're feeding during the night, I want you to not let the baby fall back to sleep at the bottle or the breast. Again, we want to cut off this feed sleep association so that they can learn to sleep independently and eventually sleep through the night. Like I said, be able to link sleep cycles on their own. Um, of course, for newborns, it does become a little bit more difficult to do this. But at least by three to four months, you want to try your level best to try to follow this. So if you are feeding at night, you want them to be aware that they're actually feeding. Um, change their diaper to stimulate before you actually do the feed. Um, do the feed and then put them back into bed awake for them to fall asleep on their own. Um, again, like I said, uh, keep keep the, the um, uh, room dark. Um, dim lights so that they actually understand that there's a difference between day and night. And coming to this topic, um, it's also very important to know that during the day, I would like you not to feed in the room so that they actually understand the difference that at night they're feeding in dim lights in the room because it is still time to sleep. And during the day, you should be feeding them outside the room, wherever it is in the house where it's noisy, active, um, bright. Yes, they might get distracted, but they will eventually learn that this is how there is a difference between day and night, where daytime is for playing as well as feeding, um, uh, but nighttime is feeding and going to sleep if they need the feeds. Now, like I said before, at around six months of age, we do try to wean off all night feeds um, if there is uh, no other issue when it comes to the baby, such as weight gain or any medical issues where your peed has recommended um, a particular night feed or a few. Okay, so by six months of age, you can actually wean off all night feeds. Great, so these are the main seven tips that we do use, okay? They're the cornerstones of uh, the strategies that I usually implement when I'm teaching, um, you know, the parents uh, about infant and toddler sleep. Um, a lot of parents know these tips and tricks, but they don't do them long enough to actually see a change. Like I said, please try them for three to four days continuously before you actually see a change. Um, the other thing is that I know change is hard. So you may know what you need to do, but getting to it is the hard part. And that is where I come in as a sleep coach. I usually tell my parents that it's um, the, the example I give my parents is that you can go to the gym with or without a trainer. You can get on a diet with or without a nutritionist. But having somebody to guide you there so that you can get those results is where I come into the picture. So if you're having a hard time trying uh, to adapt to these tips and tricks alone, um, I do have packages. You can go on my website to have a look at those and see if it is for you. If you feel that you need that push and that guidance, I am here to get you on that right track. Um, and within as short as two weeks, you will have a baby who's sleeping a good 10 to 12 hours at night and having a much more predictable day uh, nap schedule. Okay, great. So that's from my part. Now, these are just some testimonials that I'd like you guys to read. I'll give you a couple of minutes um, to go through them. I do have some video testimonials. Maybe I can try to play them. I'm not sure if I can um, share my screen. Let me just try do that. If not, then maybe you can just read the testimonials. Um, let me just try. Uh, there we go. So that's just. Anissa, as you do that, I'm going to go through the questions that we're seeing. Sure, sure. That's fine. So I'm just going to play this so that they can uh, listen to it. And maybe we can just play one and then uh, we can go to the question. So we have enough time for the questions. Yeah, because they're many. Great. Mm. Is there anything showing? I can't see. Oh, you can't see it? No, no. Maybe I send it to you. I, I know what to do. Um, try, try now. Okay, one second. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Just that again. Hi, my name is Amana, and this is a very special shout out to Anissa and Save My Slumber. Um, I think we reached out to Anissa when my son Kyle was about four and a half months, and we were talking about how we can sleep train him since he was already showing signs of being able to sleep for longer stretches and um, being able to sleep independently if he was taught to do that. 
Um, and then we began our journey with sleep training. And I think what I love the most about how Anissa conducted the whole thing was that it was tailored to Kyle's needs and we didn't have to force him to do anything that he wasn't ready for. She was super patient with us and she took us through the whole process uh, in a very thorough and efficient manner. We absolutely appreciate everything that Anissa has done for us and we did enjoy uh, the journey with her. Kyle is now nine months old and he is a much happier baby. He's a great sleeper. And as a result of that, we're happier parents. So thank you, Anissa, and wishing you all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you. So I think we can... So that's just one, but I do on my page uh, if anybody does want to go ahead and see it before you know if they, if they are thinking about doing the program um, it's good when you see people who have done it before um you know to to, to see what they went through okay um Great. i think we can start with this particular question sure so i can't see the questions from my end okay there we go oh mia Oh. So we have Brenda Kenya saying that sh since she gave birth, uh, mm -hmm. she hasn't slept through the night. We are headed to nine months now, and I don't know why she's so active between 10 p.m. to 3.30 a.m. Then now she sleeps like there's no tomorrow till I think that is midday the following day, mid-morning. I'm going to move that to this one, to mid-morning with two wake-up short windows. I would want to change that active time from night to day guide please so so i think the main problem here would be the day schedule um so when they oversleep uh, during the day uh they tend to be a lot more active and awake at night and we actually call that split nights so for a nine month old i will be sharing um all these tips and tricks but for a nine month old i'll just give you a little bit of a brief they should be having about three hours of awake time in between their naps Bedtime should be around 7 to 8 p.m. And they should be on two naps at this age, two longer naps. And these naps should add up to approximately three hours of daytime sleep. So if the, your little one is sleeping more than three hours a day, you're going to have this continuous vicious cycle of a um, little one not being able to sleep at night and sleeping during the day. So you need to change that uh the, the whole day and night uh, cycle so i will be uh, like i said i will be sharing the awake window guides as well as the uh, number of naps and hours of naps i want you to try that change that for about a week or so and see if there are any changes if not you can definitely get in touch with me and we can look more into it but please make sure that the little one is not getting more than three hours of um, daytime sleep um, another thing is the feed schedule so please make sure that she's also or he's also getting enough feeds during the day so for a nine month old he should be taking uh, a minimum of 500 and a maximum of about 900 ml per day in 24 hours um and so that we we at least rule out that he's not hungry at night um and that is why he's actually awake during the night um and super active at that particular time so if i get you right you've talked about eating making sure that the baby is well fed and you've spoken about a half a liter to a liter Yes. I'm guessing during the day, yes. Yeah. And um, the amount of hours. And the hours? Hours, the amount of hours that baby sleeping during the day. So for a nine mm -hmm. month old, baby should not be sleeping more than three naps. Uh, sorry, three hours a day within two naps. So that means one nap should be roughly an hour and a half, if correct. I get that correctly. Okay, so two naps, maybe one and a half hours each, and then make sure baby is well fed. And by this time, they should have wind. So at yes. what, what point are they eating? Yeah, so, so they're eating in between their awake windows. So for a nine-month-old, I'll just give you a brief. They should be taking about, if they're breastfeeding, four to five feeds per day, um, plus solids, obviously. Um, and if they are doing uh, uh, bottle feeds, that's about four bottle feeds per day. And the last bottle feed should take place about 30 minutes before bed. And that should be the biggest feed of the day, actually. And they should be able to go through the night 12 hours without needing a feed. So the biggest meal is an evening meal. Correct. Okay. 
and it's 30 minutes before they eat, they sleep. Okay, before so they sleep. sleep. And our target for sleep is 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. or? Between, it really depends on what time they get up from their last nap. So, mm -hmm. for example, if they've gotten up around 5 o'clock, that means for a nine-month-old, the awake window should be approximately three-ish hours, three, three and a half hours. So if they wake up from their last nap around 4 o'clock, that means their bedtime should be around 7, 7. Okay, okay. I hope you've all gotten that. Um, the next question I'm seeing here is here from uh, Cheryl. She's asking, how do I make na daytime naps longer, uh, mm -hmm. currently at 11 months and staying a whole day awake or one 20 minute nap? Okay. Great. So here again, um, awake windows come into play because if baby is undertired or overtired, they do tend to do uh, what we call cat naps. So 20 to 30 or 40 minute naps and then they're off and they can't sleep again. Um, so that's number one. Number two is you need to try to extend their naps by allowing. So, so as soon as they get up from that 20 minute nap, I don't want you to just get them out of bed and decide the nap is over, we're not going to try any longer. You need to try for at least a good 20 to 30 minutes to put them back to sleep if they're not independent sleepers. So whether it's tapping them back to sleep in their cot or patting them back to sleep, that is what you're going to keep trying consistent, consistently for a good three to four days for all naps um, consistently. And you will find that slowly they will extend their naps from 20 to 30 to 40 and they'll eventually reach a good hour and a half even two hours. So another thing is please don't make sure that they do not nap more than two hours a day because then they skip feeds and then they will need night feeds because they won't be getting enough nutrition during the day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so if if this baby is not an independent sleeper, you're mm -hmm. going to try and help them sleep. Exactly. What if they're independent sleepers? Then you actually leave them in the cot for a good 20 minutes. And when they're independent sleepers, they don't actually cry out a lot. They whinge a little bit. They try to self-soothe. And you find a lot of babies, even after 24 minutes, can actually fall back to sleep and do another whole hour, hour and a half um, after getting up from that 20-minute nap. Okay. So if you're still working on the independent sleeping, uh, you pat them or try pick up and put them down. But if they are independent, then you just leave them. Okay. Cheryl, I hope that answers your question. Uh -huh. So Charlene asked that my child, my son is three months, turning four, addicted to his pacifier. Mm -hmm. What can I do to eliminate it and enable him to sleep without it? Yeah, so that's one of the major sleep props that we always, you know, come across because it is actually one of the easiest ways to get the baby sleeping. And when they're newborns, it's actually okay to use pacifiers. But usually by the age of six months, we actually do recommend, you know, you stop it completely. So you've actually asked this question at the right time. So four months is a good time to start weaning off the pacifier. So what you can do is you can help you can help him use it to soothe, but don't help uh, don't um, allow him to use it until he falls to sleep so that he can get used to that slowly, slowly. So you can either do cold turkey or wean it off completely. So when it comes to pacifier, I normally do cold turkey. So instead of pacifier, you need to find another way. So when you're moving the pacifier, try to instead rock to sleep, um, uh, pat to sleep, uh, you know, use any anything else first, wean that in, and then slowly, slowly wean that off. So like I said, by six months, pacifiers should be picture completely. So we have to do uh, rocking or um, patting to sleep and then get rid of that slowly as well. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. So try and um, replace the pacifier or remove it before they finally fall asleep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. The next question I'm seeing here is from Tracy. Mm -hmm. Tracy is asking my baby only sleeps, only sleeps on the boob. Sounds like that pacifier. How can that be helped? How old so is your baby? Depends, yeah, this depends on the baby's age, I was going to say as well, because for newborns, this does happen. Um, you want to try not, not to let it happen every single time, but you cannot avoid it at all costs when it's a newborn. Um, but otherwise, <laughs> if the baby is over about four months old, 
um, then I would suggest you use what we call the easy way. So like I said, feed after a nap, but not before a nap. So use another method to get her to sleep or him to sleep rather than feeding. So feed in between the awake window. And then when you're putting them down for a nap, they're not going to be hungry anyways because you've just fed them. So use any other which way to get them to sleep, whether it's patting, rocking, um, holding, but do not feed. And eventually within a week or so, you will find that they will wean off needing the boob and then slowly again, wean off the patting and the rocking um, slowly as you go. So, you know, maybe do it for 10 minutes first and then seven minutes and then five minutes and then get down to three minutes. And eventually you will find that your little one is able to sleep without any of those external sleep props as well as the boob. Wow. Uh, yeah. It sounds like we need two weeks of work <laughs> just to get this baby to sleep alone. Yeah. But it's about yeah. two weeks is a very short period of time if you're looking at the long term. Like now when I look back, I don't even remember you know all the all the hardships i went through within those four to five months because the two weeks that we actually sat and said we're doing this was so worth it that now three and a half years later we look back and we're like it's the best decision and we don't even remember the the you know two weeks of hardships that we actually went through so you're looking at the long-term gain okay yeah all right um thank you for that i'm seeing Shaleen rao i think is back uh, during the day, my baby cannot sleep on his own when laid down. What can I do? Yeah, so these are basically the same, you know, same answers to all these questions. Awake windows, um, he might be overtired, undertired. That's why he's fighting his sleep because <clears throat> on you, he'll fall asleep. But when he's down, he's not falling asleep. Again, this comes to habit. You need to try to put him down when he's drowsy and then slowly, slowly wean that off as well. So instead of letting him fall asleep on you completely, use the awake window. Once you know that he's getting drowsy, put him down um, and then pat him to sleep, uh, tap him to sleep, and then slowly again, wean that off as well. Okay, for those who have just joined, perhaps you can take them through what this awake window is, because I'm seeing the same sure. question repeatedly. Um, okay. And we'll still answer all of them, but... Um, just to make them understand what is an awake window and what is okay. that so, yeah so generally an awake window is the amount of time that a baby is allowed or can tolerate being awake um in between naps or sleep times so depending on the baby's age um there are different awake times so it starts with very little time awake when they're at the newborn stage stage a couple of months and then as they get older they drop the amount of naps they need and their awake windows actually get longer so uh, like i said uh, in the beginning newborns can only stay awake for a good 45 minutes to an hour during this awake time is feed um you know birth them maybe do a little bit of play for five ten minutes and then they're back down so as they get older this awake window moves from 45 minutes to an hour to an hour and a half to three hours and eventually when they're on one nap for about five to five and a half hours of awake time before they actually drop their nap altogether uh, between the ages of about 12 to 18 months where they can actually stay awake on a full day um, without getting tired. Okay. And on that question, if you have a toddler, because I'm seeing toddler moms as well, if you have mm -hmm. a toddler who's two years and above, are they okay? Is it okay if they don't sleep? Do they still do we want them to sleep in there during the day? Yeah. Like so, two years old, so two years old, we still want them to be on one nap. It can be a short nap, like an hour long or even 45 minutes. Um, generally, we tend to try to keep the nap till at least they're about three years old. Um, so midday naps, so around one o'clock uh, to about two o'clock, and then they're back up till about eight o'clock. Okay. And then from eight o'clock, they should be able to sleep till the next yeah. seven or eight a.m. Okay. Exactly. okay. Generally, you find ten hours, eleven hours of sleep is on average what you see per night. Okay, so this question you will see today so many times. It seems to be a big problem. How do I make mm -hmm. my baby nap during the day? And then while on yeah, that, so yeah. have them together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can see here. Uh, hmm. I think this one 
is also saying her naps during the day are about 20 to 30 minutes and i think you had partially answered this but at night yeah. she's sleeping between 11 to 1 or is that 1 a.m maybe 11 to 1 a.m i think she means one yeah, i think it should Not be 1 a.m and how can I remedy this so that she's longer and earlier at night? So I think you can combine both. One, how to do the naps during the day and then how to help them sleep earlier, like at seven or eight mm -hmm. or whatever, and then up to morning. Okay. So again, awake windows are a big, big thing. Like you can tell a lot, like most of the questions have awake windows in the answer. So if your eight month old is not napping, again, that may be due to overtiredness or undertiredness. Um, so please look at awake window guides and start following that. So if they're waking up, for example, at seven o'clock, look at the awake window for an eight month old, which is usually around three hours. Um, so after three hours, try to put her or him to sleep and you will find that they will sleep much easier. If you're getting 20 to 30 minute cat naps still, again, try to extend these naps. If they're independent sleepers, let them be in the cot for a while before you actually decide that that nap is over. If they're not independent sleepers, do not remove them from the cot and decide the nap is done. Try to extend the nap. You normally to sleep, which is rocking or tapping or patting, um, but try not to nurse every single time that they get up. Try other methods to get them back to sleep rather than nursing because when you do nurse to sleep, you do find there's a vicious cycle of uh, getting very short uh, short naps as well as short feeds. So they tend to fall asleep while feeding, so they've not done a full feed. And then the same thing happens with the nap. They get up halfway through the nap because they've not fed enough. So use another method to try to extend their nap and use awake windows. Now, when it comes to an early bedtime, that's another thing you really need to keep in mind. When I give you the awake window guide, you will find that I, there will be um, a, a section on when you should actually cut a nap at the end of the day. So again, according to age, there should be a cutoff for all naps. So for example, five o'clock should be a cutoff for most uh, kids below the age of six months. If it's between about six to 12 months, it's around four o'clock so that they actually have enough sleep pressure to be able to fall asleep at bedtime of around 7, 8 p.m. without struggling because they, they are tired enough. If you're allowing the little one to sleep till about 6 o'clock and then you expect them to go back to sleep at 7, 7, 30, 8 o'clock, it's not fair on them and it's not possible either. So they need to build that sleep pressure up. So always cut naps at around 4 to 5 o'clock depending on the age of the baby and then they will be ready for an early bedtime between 7 to 8 p.m. And and uh, just a reminder that whether they sleep at 8 p.m. or 11 p.m., they're up going to wake up. At <laughs> <laughs> they're going to wake up. At so you try to bed a bit early because they benefit. <laughs> And so do you, because as parents, you know, we, we tend to forget ourselves completely. And I can tell you that this is not healthy. Personal wise, relationship wise, I find a lot of moms who come to me, um, parents are sleeping in separate rooms. And this is not a healthy relationship. Yes, yes, babies come first. Yes, your children come first. But if you can do both, why not? Because if, uh, you know, I I have read a lot of research on what what gifts you can give um, your babies and a healthy marriage, showing kids a healthy marriage is one of the most um, amazing gifts uh, you can actually give to your kid or baby because once they start seeing that there's a healthy marriage, their whole um, mood, happiness, everything changes and they start understanding that love and um, all that, that from, from an early age. So... Please give yourselves that, um, you know, that uh, uh, leeway at in the evenings uh, to be able to spend that time, um, just the two of you as well. Yeah, that's awesome. I think we'll talk about that next time, how to balance between being a mom and, the, you know, exactly. being a wife. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm seeing here Esther Grace. How can you train a baby to sleep without rocking? And sometimes the rocking doesn't help and he's full. 
Yeah. So again, it's just weaning off. So you can start with rocking because that's what the baby's used to. If normally it takes you about 20 minutes to rock to sleep, do a 10 minute rocking and then put baby into cot and try patting, tapping because the baby you're saying is full and is tired if you're following awake windows and then slowly get rid of the rocking, just go to patting and then again, wean that off uh, every, you know, even if it's two minutes every few days, uh, wean it off by patting from 10 to eight to six to four. And eventually you will find that baby will be able to fall asleep without you altogether. Thank you. Um, I can see we have six minutes left. So uh, huh. I'm seeing here, my baby is five weeks. This is Stella's baby. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to stay up for longer stretches during the day. Five weeks is a small baby. Yeah, but in the night, she wakes up every two to three hours, but stays up in stays up in one of the awake windows. How do I avoid this? So it's longer stretches during the day, but in the night, she wakes up every two to three hours, but stays up in one of the awake windows. How do I avoid this? Okay, so at five weeks, first and foremost, the awake window should not be over 45 minutes if you're really pushing it one hour. Um, so please make sure you're following this. So every one hour, 45, to, uh, 45 minutes to one hour, you try to put the baby to sleep. And this doesn't mean just feeding them to sleep. You can use any other method to get them to sleep. Um, and of course, at this age, at night, if they are waking up every two to three hours, it is because they do need a feed. Um, remember, at least until the age of two to three months, um, you just have to understand that this comes with what motherhood is about and you do need to of course depending whether you're breastfeeding or bottle feeding um, usually go with every two to three hours when you're breastfeeding every three to four hours if you're bottle feeding formula um, so until you know you hit the the mark of about three months this is going to be happening um, but again like i said to get them back into sleep um, at night when you're feeding make sure it's dim lights mellow mellow tone even when you're talking to them make sure that they're getting that difference between a daytime feed and a nighttime feed so that they know what is coming and if you consistently do this every night where you're dimming the lights and making sure that they're feeding in a, in a very mellow uh, dim lit place they will start understanding that they that they need to get back to sleep after the feed and you will find that they will stop um, keeping uh, keeping you awake and staying awake for as long as they do as of now at night. Okay. Our last question is uh, still like it's been answered well. Um, Frida, Frida is asking, how can I help my seven weeks baby to sleep without crying a lot and being fussy? The baby colicky. But mm -hmm. um, how can I how can I help my baby? Uh-huh. Well, again, same thing. First of all, awake windows. If it's a seven week old, not more than 45 minutes to one hour awake at a time, especially during the day. And night, use the pickup with the method. I mentioned this in the beginning, maybe you were not there. Yeah. It was a good thing to start teaching the little one. So you're actually just putting baby down for their nap at the right time. Leave them in for two minutes, even if they're whinging or crying. Pick them up for about a minute, soothe them put them back down and you have to be very consistent and very patient. If you do this for a good four to five days continuously, I promise you within one week, you will be finding that your seven week old will be able to self soothe to sleep for at least half the naps, if not all. Okay, thank you so much. I can see Brenda here wants to say thank you. Mm -hmm. for well done. <laughs> And then we have Gloria here saying thank you. So um, yeah, thank you so much. I want You're to also welcome. thank you. Um, you have spoken for an, an actual hour. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we you know, it's a big, big topic. Yeah. So uh -huh. um, you know, I have been thinking about uh, sleep. Uh, sorry, group coaching as well. So you know, if if there are people who are interested, because when it's a one on one, it's a lot more expensive. It may not be in everyone's budget. But I have been thinking about group coaching. So if moms come together, you know, friend moms who have babies around the same age. 
um, you know, within two, three months difference. And they are willing to come to me together and want to do the training as a group coach. It's actually half the price. So please feel free to reach out and say, okay, we are five moms. We need a minimum of five. We're five moms who have babies within the you know, age range of six to nine months. And we want to go ahead with the sleep coaching. How much would it be? And how do we go about it? I'm very open to that. And also whoever's um, you know, been on the live today, we can get in touch with Doc if they are interested in actually doing the full sleep training program. I'm actually giving a 15% discount for everybody who's tuned in and um, gets in touch with Doc. And she can just let me know your name and your number. And, you know, if you're ready to go ahead, let's get you all sleeping because sleep is so important. I can tell you that. <laughs> awesome. So you have all gotten a 15% discount on yes. her sleep coaching program. So that's amazing, amazing, amazing. So we want to thank you. Thank you all of you for showing up. Yes. And uh, we'll keep talking on the group. Anissa is actually on the group. Yes. Um, so uh, when she shares the, the uh, awake windows, I'm going to share them in the group as well. If you're not in the group, you'd like to join us, please just DM um, or just write on the comments. We will follow you and uh, see how to add you onto the group. We want to thank all of you again and again. Please, please, please reach out, reach out to myself, reach out to Anissa. Uh, we want to make sure you're sleeping, uh, you're thriving in your relationships, you're thriving in your parenting, and that is why we are here. So be blessed. I am going to end this live now. Stella, thank you for saying thank you. Good night, everybody. Sleep tight. <laughs> Yes, sleep tight. Yes. Wendy is saying thank you, Anissa. Looking forward to uh, better sleep. I am so happy to see this. Um, the, the channel has been amazing. Be thank blessed. You. Yeah, God bless you. See you, everybody.